Good morning, Mr. Chair and board members. I'm Keith Hill, the Advanced Training Bureau Chief, and I've been in the position since February 2nd of this year. Um, the, currently, we have an opening for an Advanced Training Instructor, and uh, that will, uh, and one of the things that has held up that appointment is the, uh, the appointment of the director. Uh, it was felt like that the director needed to have some input into the selection of that instructor. So uh, now that we've got a director on board, I think that we're going to move forward with that pretty quickly. Um, I've got one support staff member that uh, started in that position back in May 4th. And uh, during the time between in the vacancy that we had at the advanced training for a bureau chief from November through February, uh, the process of getting courses accredited, instructors getting approved, and uh, advanced training level uh, certification being awarded to various law enforcement officers around the state began the backlog. Currently, that backlog has been satisfied, and occasionally we get a call that says that, um, you know, I sent this in back and uh, yeah, I haven't seen anything acted on. So, that being said, once I get that information, I ask them to resubmit that information to me and get that taken care of expeditiously so that uh, they're no longer waiting on those, uh, those needs to be fulfilled. Um, as of uh, fiscal year 18, uh, 86 advanced level classes were conducted statewide for an estimated 1,720 law enforcement officers being trained. Um, one of the things that I continue to do is search for and entertain uh, advanced level training for our calendar, whether it be in Lordsburg or Clayton. I think that it's quite vitally important that the Law Enforcement Academy look at the training that needs to be conducted, listen to the uh, the agencies and law enforcement officers throughout the state on what kind of training they want and try to accommodate that request as soon as we can. Look for proper vendors that can perform those uh, trainings um, simply because of the staffing levels with the Law Enforcement Academy. Um, we don't have subject matter experts on board that are found out in the private sector as it were. And when I get those uh, those uh, people that come in can teach these courses that are necessary and vital to continuing education for the officers. We encourage them to uh, submit to the calendar so that we can get this training posted on the calendar. And the goal is to get the, um, the law enforcement calendar for the advanced training section as the first go-to place for law enforcement in the state. And uh, right now we've been uh, pretty successful at, at uh, finding vendors that are willing to do that. Uh, currently, uh, since I've uh, taken the role as a bureau chief, I've accredited over 550 courses. Um, I average about uh, 24 um, accreditations a month and about 15 advanced level certifications a month. So I'm continually getting uh, law enforcement officers that are seeking to uh, either advance their career uh, through advanced level certification or uh, present courses to their individual departments for credit that uh, so we can get those things accomplished. Um, currently there's uh, 136 agencies that have reported completion of compliance of annual training requirements to the academy and that's about 70 percent of the agencies in the state. Um, the 1819 biennium is still current, it's still ongoing, hasn't completed, and the uh, reporting deadline for that will be March 1st next year. Uh, in addition to that, there's 118 agencies that have reported compliance with the annual firearms requalification reporting, and that's about 69% of the agencies uh, out in the, in the state that haven't reported, that have reported, I'm sorry. In addition, uh, the ACADIS database that uh, we use to uh, review officer uh, data uh, from uh, 
education that they've completed, uh, levels of certification or instructor level certification. Um, from my understanding, is moving forward, and that there are uh, law enforcement officers that are being brought on board that are being given their own uh, portal for um, for that, uh, so that they can see what they've accomplished, and uh, so that if they're out of compliance, they can go to that portal and see what they're they're needing to get that uh, get their educational requirements. Um, if you have any questions, I stand for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions at this time? Mr. Chair, if I may. Mr. Elder, so is there a mechanism in place, or are you going to be putting the mechanism in place to notify departments of training requirements such as like biennium, whenever that, those changes are made to the legislature? Not all departments have the resources to be up in the legislature all the time and staying up on all the legislative changes. Is there a mechanism in place to make departments aware of those changes that are taking place as it relates to law enforcement training? Yes, sir. Uh, as my understanding with the ACADIS program, since um, departments are being brought in and on board with that, we can actually uh, send an email to the uh, lead executive of that department that says this is what's needed or this is where your department is in training and then uh, in your case as the, as the chief, you can actually push that down to your training coordinator or and pass to your whole department. Okay. But in regards to the legislative changes, if the legislature were to come out and mandate additional training for officers, is that something you have a mechanism where you will make all departments aware of that information? We can do that through that email, Chief. Okay. And then the other question I've got regarding ACADIS, because I'm assuming this is the the system, the portal that departments are supposed to check officer registries now and make sure that all those are current as far as the officers that they employ or terminate or resign or whatever. Is that correct? Right? The ACADIS program is what we review when, let's say you call up and you're looking to hire right. or you're looking to, uh, to uh, check up on the status of, a, of an officer. You can call the advanced training bureau and we can give you uh, a, a view of that uh, individual officer, whether they are a uh, prospect or whether they're on board. Um, if it's a disciplinary thing, then it's, there's another section that, that belongs to that, and Ms. Madrano can actually assist your agency or your investigators in those regards. Okay. And I don't know if you, if you know the answer to this question. Do you know if this system is in sync with DFA? Because I know a lot of departments have a lot of problems this year where the numbers that DFA had for the number of officers employed by each agency was different from ACADIS and it created a lot of problems for departments when it came to the grants. Do you know if that has been fixed or what the issue was with that? I don't know if that's been fixed, Chief. Um, I can tell you that um, when I look at uh, department staffing, I can see that there are individuals that have not updated their LEA into which is the uh, onboarding to let us know at the academy who's working for which department. I still see uh, uh, several things. One, the, the department isn't correct. Their rank is not correct. And uh, their status within the department, um, whether they're active, inactive, or retired. So it's pretty vital that um, and I know that the LEA 82 is now an online item, so it starts with the officer um, creating that, that LEA 82 that gets vetted by somebody within that department. The other thing is, is that I see an issue with um, officer notifications in the event that um, we need to get in touch with them outside of their department email address. So what we're trying to do is get them to get officers to understand when I talk to them on the phone that hey, give me an email address that is your personal email address or your uh, personal phone number. I don't need a cell phone number, but a contact phone. So that we, if we need to uh, get in touch with you, email you a certificate, uh, those kind of things where we can actually uh, get information to those officers um, with uh, items that they actually need. And then the last question I have for you in regards to training itself, 
Is there a mechanism in place? I, I realize in this curriculum we have lesson plans and all those kinds of things that the instructors instruct from. Is there anything in place to monitor or control how the class is taught? Because I do know from experience that every instructor out there wants to put their own spin on these classes. The problem for departments, though, is they expect a standard course to be taught. And when instructors start deviating and deciding they're going to throw their own stuff in there, it creates problems. Is there a mechanism to monitor that or make sure that they are teaching that curriculum in a manner that it should be taught by the LEA? Well, that's one of the things that we have uh, some control over. And there's a process, and I've had conversations with uh, uh, Dr. Fonz, uh, Deputy Secretary, and, and I'm sure that I'll be having these conversations with the director as well. Uh, coming up with a system that uh, where we can actually, when we review a lesson plan, that they are meeting a standard that is best practice. And take a lot or try to limit the uh, individual spin uh, that um, an instructor would have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further questions? Great. I appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.